Today's episode is brought to you by Artlist. If you record videos on your travels or holidays, maybe you have tried jumping into the water with your camera in hand, thinking you're about to get some epic shots. What happened to me when I first tried it? I thought my footage would come out exactly like the vibrant like GoPro ads. But then in reality, it looked more like kind of like a murky pond in like Transylvania or some awful place. So I guess I really learned it the hard way that capturing footage underwater really works in different ways and is not as straightforward. But don't worry, after some trial and error, I figured it out. So stick around and I'm gonna share my favorite tips that make things a lot better. Okay, so diving straight into the first thing, you gotta know that underwater filming plays by its own rules. Underwater, it is almost like a different ball game. So in the next bit, I'll break down all of the rules one by one and just knowing about these tips is gonna be super, super helpful for you guys. First, let's talk about movement. Like underwater, everything is moving. The water, you, the fish and other objects you're trying to film, and this movement means it's probably better to be as still as possible. So you gotta think yourself as a human tripod almost. Like the steadier you are, the clearer and more professional your shots will turn out. So first up, if your camera has a stabilizer feature, use it. This can help you to smooth out some of the inevitable like small movements. But the real trick is how you move or rather how you don't. So try to glide through the water and don't paddle like crazy. If you're moving, do it slowly and keep your arms close to your body to reduce drag. Let's tackle a common misconception. So it is true that slow motion makes things a bit more stable. So high frame rates are quite useful on land, but underwater, they're not necessarily your best friend because they require more light. And as we have discussed, Light is kind of like a precious commodity down there. So shooting at a high frame rate can result in darker and grainier footage because your camera has to crank up the ISO to compensate for the lack of light. Instead, stick to the basics. Like use a standard frame rate of like 24 or 30 frames per second. In my experience, that is often more than enough for clear, vibrant underwater shots. And remember, underwater footage inherently has this like dreamy, slow moving quality due to the water's resistance. So you might not need to capture slow motion to really get that effect, okay? Now, quick update from the field. I got myself one of these waterproof bags for my iPhone to test out some shots. And I think in shallow water, this does a really good job and it shows you that gear doesn't really matter too much. But here's a really essential tip that you should know about in order not to ruin your footage. You gotta turn off auto white balance. In underwater situation, lighting changes so rapidly and if you don't lock your white balance, your colors will be like all over the place and it will make color correction like almost impossible. I like to set mine to daylight to about 5200 Kelvin on the GoPro and if you're using a phone, definitely use a third party app that lets you adjust the settings manually and also set the white balance. It's really crucial for maintaining consistent colors underwater and you'll thank yourself later when you start editing your footage. Next, let's talk about zooming and focal length because it's a bit of a tricky one underwater. In my opinion, it is really tempting to go for that super wide angle point of view that a lot of action cams have to capture as much as possible. But there's a catch. You might have noticed that things tend to look much smaller when you're below the surface. So if you set your camera too wide and you easily tend to lose the focus on your subject. On the flip side, zooming in helps to highlight really interesting details and brings back a lot of much needed contrast to your shots. The key is to balance. So I would start off with a wider shot to give a bit of context show the environment, the water, the sense of space, and then you wanna zoom in on the details that make the scene unique. Next thing is light, and that behaves differently under the waves. It bends, diffuses, and loses like intensity the deeper you go. And this can make your footage look flat or colorless if you're not careful. 
but it also opens up opportunities for some really cool effects if you know how to work it. So for starters, I would try to avoid pointing my camera like downwards because shooting downwards often results in like really dull, shadow heavy footage without much contrast. And besides, you're gonna film into like nothing interesting. Instead, you wanna aim at an angle upwards and towards the light source. And this can bring some dramatic backlighting into play, illuminating particles in the water, or outlining your subject with like a glowing edge or something like this, which looks super cool. Just found some shade because it's so bright. It's the middle of the day and the sun is up high. And normally those are the worst conditions for filming but underwater it actually works to our advantage, so let's go give it a go. Next, let's talk about golden hour. When it comes to shooting on land, we're all about golden hour, right? But if you dive underwater, all of a sudden these rules like flip. So here's the deal. The best time to capture underwater scenes isn't during golden hour, it's actually at noon. At midday, the sun is directly overhead, piercing through the water with the least amount of distortion and providing the most natural light you can get underwater. You get a little less shadow play and more of even diffused light that makes everything look a lot sharper and vibrant. Now shooting at noon also minimizes unwanted color cast that often plagues underwater footage. You know that murky tint that makes everything look like it's filmed through like a weird filter or something? That is less of an issue when the sun is beaming straight down. So next time you go shooting underwater, aim for the time when the sun is at its peak. As a filmmaker, yes, it might feel like a little weird to skip golden hour, but trust me, underwater, it's a game changer. Okay, we just got off the boat today and unfortunately we didn't really get a whole lot of good shots that we were looking for. And that really shows you that underwater you have to be a lot more persistent because you can't really influence all of the external factors like the wind, the water clarity and all of this kind of stuff. So one really good piece of advice is ask the locals because they'll usually know the best spots and the best conditions to film. But other than that, you gotta really stay persistent and I'm just gonna keep on filming and maybe try another one tomorrow until I get the shots that I was looking for. Okay, you are back home, you captured everything and you transferred it, great stuff, but you're not done yet because you can do a lot of improvements in post-production and I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks on how you can correct colors, adjust contrast and really make underwater scenes pop. So this next chapter is brought to you by the sponsor of today's video, that is Artlist. I'm gonna dive into how to color correct the underwater clip using a stock video example from Artlist. Now, as you can see here, I got my Artlist Max Plan enabled for the highest tiering and that gives me access to this amazing log and raw footage. Now, if you don't know what that is, log footage is known for looking like a little bit flat because it is almost unprocessed and that is making it ideal for color correction practice because this kind of image carries a ton of information and that makes it ideal for color correction. Now, in my opinion, professional color grading is quite intimidating for a lot of people, including myself, but in the context of underwater footage, it's only about knowing a few key adjustments. So let's jump into Premiere Pro. And we start off with a clip looking a little bit greenish. Now this is where the Lumetri panel becomes interesting in Premiere Pro. So the first thing that I have to do is move the temperature slider. And dragging this a little bit towards the orange is going to add a lot of warmth back into the clip. And that is basically countering that green tint. Now if it moves a little bit towards cyan, you can rebalance that and move the tint slider towards magenta. And that will basically bring back the blues. Now, for detail and contrast, I generally like to lift the shadows and dial down the highlights, and this step brings back details and information in an image. Next, you can tweak the whites and blacks a tiny bit, which enhances the contrast even further without losing the natural feel of the scene. And last but not least, I like to apply a little contrast boost, and that looks pretty good so far. An alternative way to do this is using the curves function and basically creating an S shape. So all I gotta do is click on the middle to select the midtones, 
Then I click to the upper end of the curve to select the highlights. And lastly, I click on the lower end to select the shadows. So as you can see, this makes the image a little bit more contrasty. It's kind of what we want underwater. And you can also select individual color channels and that will impact the color cast in your image quite a bit. Now, reds tend to be always off underwater because of the light absorption. So I select that channel only and I pull that down a bit to recalibrate the reds across the entire image. And lastly, I select the blue channel and I pull that up a tiny bit to compensate for the color cast. Now, in the last step, we can apply a lot to make the colors a little bit more cinematic. A lot is basically a color preset for video, which gives like a distinct cinematic look to your footage. And you can either use one of the built-in ones in Premiere Pro or get a third party one, it doesn't really matter. And generally speaking, I tend to go not overboard with the intensity because otherwise it tends to feel like a little bit unnatural. And once you found something that suits your taste, have a look at the final product and you see that the footage successfully went from flat to cinematic. So if you're keen elevating your video content, I highly recommend checking out Artlist. They are not just about stock footage and lots, they also offer an incredible selection of music that could be like the missing piece in turning your videos from good to like truly good. So whether you're looking for a song to set the mood or better visuals to complement your existing footage, Artlist has got you covered. They've got your back. They're like this awesome friend that you can always call and they're gonna pick you up like 5 a.m. in their car in the middle of nowhere. Like a real dude, real friend. Their plans are like surprisingly affordable, giving you access to a ton of resources without breaking the bank. So for instance, the creator plan is less than $10 and it gets you started for YouTube, period. If you also want to use it for client productions, then I highly recommend the pro plan. And if you want the full set of everything, including stock footage and templates and all of this good stuff, then you might want to upgrade to Artlist Max. Plus, if you sign up through my affiliate link in the video description, you'll get two months for free, making an already great deal even better. So massive thanks once again to the amazing team at Artlist for sponsoring yet another video. Now, I just got back to the hotel and I'm sitting here and I wanted to uh, check out today's footage. And it turns out that my SD card uh, wiped itself clean. I'm not sure if I'll be able to recover the videos, but let's see. Now, the lesson learned is that backups are really crucial and it's actually not the first time that this kind of stuff happened. I had like multiple GoPros fail and get like water leakage despite of their claims of being waterproof and it's really, really frustrating, but it's also part of the adventure. So make sure to back up your footage ideally every evening as soon as you're back in the hotel. Now, lastly, I want to talk about equipment. But before, a quick recap about the most important theory with underwater stuff. Now, the deeper you go, the more light you lose. And this loss of light not only affects visibility, but also impacts the vibrancy of colors in your footage. Now, reds and oranges in particular, they tend to fade away like quite quickly, leaving your footage looking a little bit dull and like washed out. Now, as a rule of thumb, by staying in shallower waters, you're maximizing the amount of available light for your shot. Jumping into the equipment talk, like I tend to lean towards the practical side. Most of my underwater shots I like to capture with a GoPro or a smartphone in one of these like underwater cases. They're pretty straightforward. They do a great job in shallow waters. Let's be honest, they are a lot easier on the wallet. Plus you don't have to carry around like a three kilogram underwater housing everywhere that you use like twice a year. Now, if you're all about getting more crisps and more professional underwater shots, then yeah, underwater housing is the way to go. The bottom line, use what works for your style and budget, whether it's a GoPro, your phone, or a kitted out mirrorless camera in a housing. The most important thing is the story you're telling with those shots. So keep it simple, focus on the beauty you want to capture, and the rest will kind of like follow automatically. And finally, a quick but very crucial tip before we wrap up. You always want to rinse your gear with fresh water after each dive 
because salt water is really hard and it will damage like electronic equipment over time if it's left unchecked. So just rinse it and that will really extend the life of your electronics. So there you have it, my guide to upping your underwater filming game. And with these tips, you're well on your way capturing scenes that look much, much better. Thanks for sticking around until the end. If you find any value in this, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more stuff like this. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in one of the next videos.